Genetics plays a most important role. Why? Because when God made things, animals and plant, human beings, just name all species of living things. He placed the gorilla in Africa and the polar bear in Alaska. If you think that God made a mistake, all you have to do is to put each animal in the opposite environment that God made for it. Like the gorilla, place him in Alaska. You will find that he would die with pneumonia in less than a fortnight. Place the polar bear in Africa. You would find that he would succumb to the heat. It's unbearable because his cells were not designed to live in an environment so hostile as the one in the Serengeti Plain, which is hot. Likewise, the gorilla would say that the environment of the polar bear is hostile to his cellular structure. And what about the food of the gorilla? and the food of the polar bear, where we find that the food of the gorilla are berries, plants, and leaves, fruits. The diet of the polar bear, on the other hand, is flesh and blood. If we believe, like we always does, we believe in philosophy, we believe in everything, but we never know anything. We just don't know anything. We believe in a whole lot of things. Like I always say that I prefer to deliver myself to God than to believe in God because there is uncertainty. The polar bear eats blood, not so for the gorilla. He's plant. But now we look at the behavior of these two animals. We find that the gorilla is a very pleasant animal. He has no enemies in the forest. He raises his offspring just like we do. He's a pleasant animal, not so for the polar bear. This animal eats blood. He has to kill to live because blood compels that animal to be vicious and savage. So he eats blood. We go to the birds. The eagle is a bird, so is a buzzard. And so is a hummingbird. That's a bird too. But the hummingbird, like the gorilla, he likes to indulge in the nectar of the plant. He has nothing to do with blood. He sucks the nectar from the plant. He's a very beautiful little bird. He's very gentle. Not so for the eagle. The eagle, on the other hand, eats blood, eats rats, eats snakes. But look at the disposition of the eagle and that of the polar bear, opposed to the hummingbird and the gorilla. We apply that same example to the plants. So as we take a very close look at plants and animals, we find that they have to obey a cosmic arrangement, a life procession that has maintained throughout creation. Does that apply to humans? The answer should be yes. When God placed each group, whether Eskimo, Chinese, Europeans, Native Americans, and Africans, we were placed in different geographical location with a food that is consistent with the cellular structure that we represent. So in 1988, when the Usha Research Institute was litigated in the Supreme Court of New York, because the ad read that AIDS and the rest of the diseases were cured, while being litigated, we asked the Supreme Court of New York, since God made specific food for specific gene group, when you remove the Africans from Africa, did you bring his food with him? The answer was no. We're brothers and sisters. If the food that God made for us was not brought with us when we were brought on those ships from Africa 500 years ago, what are we eating? What are we ingesting? And whatever we are ingesting, did our archaeologists, paleontologists, historians, or Egyptologists did they take time out to ask about the food that would maintain my hormones, my central nerve system in perfect working condition? No, they didn't ask these questions. This was never even thought of. They went on to tell us about Plato, the philosophers, Plato, Aristotle, Diogenes, as if though that matters. The archaeologists were telling us about the various fossils that was found in Egypt 10 million years ago. The others, the historians, 
they talk about what took place in Africa so many hundreds of thousands of years ago. But never did one said that he found or that they found a food that is consistent with our cellular structure. And that is of most important. To understand healing, to understand health, one has to be very extremely careful because each group depends on different food. So while they was talking to us and forcing us, I remember the conversation, oh, this group of people, they are dead. Black people are dead. No, black people are not dead. Black people are not ignorant. Black people has been misinformed. So since our food was not brought on those ships, we are eating something that offends our biology. And in offending our biology, it offends our thinking pattern. This is why we are vulnerable to, this, to the discretion of many. Yes, we are. It's like putting gasoline in a diesel motor. It's not gonna run. It just can't run. So in placing the fuel that is improper for that engine, we find that there is problems. And what do you think is happening to us? Could we dialogue and make sense? It's difficult today. Cyanide has played such an important role in detouring that thinking pattern. And we have been so resistant that if we are told that Africa holds the secret to our health and our existence, we would quickly deny that there is a connection when deep down the Creator placed us in Africa with a food that is consistent with us. Now we find ourselves angry. Our children, very angry. They are born nervous. There is such thing as ADD, attention deficit disorder. There's also the undermining, the little untruths that we tell each other, the impatience, the love that's been gone. Love is out the window because it would be impossible for us to love ourselves first while ingesting cyanide. It confuses thought pattern. It disarranges the central nervous system and one finds himself very angry. When God does things, it, sh it should be respected. We went to Africa, Central and South America. We find the tropical plants, we put them together, and this is what we found, that there is only one disease. And that was said for the first time to the Supreme Court of New York in 1988, that there is only one disease. That one disease that is afflicting us is the basis for all manifestations of pathology. The mucous membrane has been compromised. Compromised by what? By an acid substance. You see, our body are alkaline. The food should be alkaline. Being that it is alkaline, it is acid free and it is electrical. You will never find a battery that says acid battery. No, if the battery has energy, it is alkaline. When God created things, that he placed things in a particular geography with a particular temperature consistent with that cell group because God and only God could do such a thing. He placed the gorilla in Africa with some green leaves all around the gorilla. His environment is green. Not so for the polar bear. The polar bear is placed in Alaska with seals, fish that he should eat and it's cold. The gorilla, he is placed with leaves that he should eat. Among those leaves, there were no bananas because bananas are hybrids. Again, from the category of industrial agriculture. So the gorilla, like the polar bear, if we were to interfere with God, you will see something very disastrous. All you have to do is to move the gorilla from Africa and place it in Alaska. He meet upon two weeks, he'll freeze to death. He cannot protect himself from the cold. And after, if you were to succeed in helping him to live in such an environment, what about his food? He doesn't eat fish or seals. 
he eat plants, he eat leaves, he eat berries, fruits, and vice versa. If you were to take the polar bear to Africa, most certainly, he could not live with the temperature. The temperature is too much for him. It is impossible. It is unbearable because he was not made to live in Africa. We are the children of Africa. Africa did not have alcohol. We are beginning to open our eyes to see that the answer all the time was God. Thank you. Thank you very much.